All right, so you sacrificed everything in your life just so you could become a developer, but there is one problem. You aren't making progress fast enough. You want the remote work, you want to increase your income, you want to ditch the morning commute and take some nice holidays, but even though you're working really hard, you're still not seeing the results. Why is that? Here's the reality. You are ignoring the most important thing, fundamentals writing code and actually building applications. So in this video, I want to share with you what I wish I knew starting out so you can actually get that first developer job so you can work remotely and increase your income without wasting months or even years. And the most important lesson I will share with you at the end, so let's get into it. The first lesson, consistency is key. When I first started learning code, I did one thing right, I was consistent. I sacrificed everything to learn how to code. Friends, girlfriend, social activities. I was extreme because I really wanted this. And after six months of going through this pain, I realized what consistency is all about. The first type of consistency, which everyone talks about, is showing up every day. If you are one month into coding, this is beneath you, this is easy. But the second type is called progressive overload, meaning every day you increase the difficulty, aka you have to consistently get better. You can see this in the gym. There are two type of people, right? There are people who go there for three months and expect to get jacked and quit or don't follow a program and look exactly the same after one year. The second type of person is the one that follows a program, logs their weights, reps and sets. The second person is trying to improve last week's numbers by a little bit. The first person wasted their time, energy and potential. The second one is getting results, is getting jacked, more confident, having more energy and getting compliments. The second person will very likely get better at the gym and will get even better results in the future because of positive reinforcement. I want you to check out these graphs. The first one is from a viewer of the channel who is currently applying to jobs and will most likely fail the job search. And this is one of my students who is currently learning. Who do you think is getting better as a developer? Obviously my student. The first one is slowly atrophying his skills. This is what I call the PBD, the post bootcamp disorder, which is to get to a decent level plateau then slowly regress. What doesn't grow dies and this is a law of nature, you cannot change it. Part two of being consistent is this. You have to consistently acquire good habits. Let's dissect this with another example. If you consistently have bad posture, you'll end up with something called a nerd neck. If you consistently eat junk food, you'll end up lethargic and have zero energy to study after your regular job. You need to control what you are consistent with. When I got my first job, I didn't have a mentor to teach me good practices. I relied on the same resources that you have. The first few months were fine, but as the application that I was working on grew, my work started to become harder. I was writing such bad code that instead of working on something for two, three hours, I was taking three to four days. And I remember once I had to pull a 16 hour shift to deliver a few features for a release that our investors wanted to see. I want to tell you that everything was great, but I failed. I had anxiety and panic attacks and I was this close to losing my job and I don't wish that feeling on anybody. Another caveat that you need to keep in mind here is that it is harder to get rid of bad habits than to acquire good habits because you need to spend energy on learning something and learning something totally new. Consistency creates habits and those habits compound to create the results that you want. This next lesson will 100% kill your developer career if you are falling for it. Stop changing what you are doing if it doesn't work. The first phase any aspiring developer goes through is uninformed optimism. They get really excited about coding because they have zero clue about what they are about to get themselves in. And as they learn more, they realize actually this isn't all perfect. It isn't all sunshine and rainbows. And they go into stage two, informed pessimism. They see all the stuff that is wrong with coding. Then they continue down the path until they get to their lowest point, which is the value of despair. They see all the bad stuff, AI, recruiters, hiring managers, layoffs. And here's what happens next. They jump from web development into Python or Java or email development or cybersecurity, aka a new opportunity which they think will be amazing and way better. But if you push through the value of despair, you'll become an informed optimist. You start to understand the good and the bad of web development, 
but you know how to control the bad stuff so you get the upside the dream lifestyle the higher pay and the remote work and then finally you'll get to the last stage which is success aspiring developers go through these five stages but they never get to four and five because they continue to repeat step one step two and three you have to think to yourself am i just in the value of despair where everything is doom and gloom and i need to push through or am i looking for another way out the grass isn't greener on the other side it's greener wherever you water it lesson number three if you don't take your self-education seriously you will stay broke i've seen so many good people who are half ass in coding and stopped developing their skills you need to make some decisions you might need to give up some activities and or people to focus on your skill acquisition make it a six to twelve month monk mode protocol where you double down when i was coming up I let go of everything that wasn't my job and coding. I was in a privileged situation where I didn't have a family and kids to provide for. But if you have a spouse, you might have to have a chat and explain to him or to her that this thing is important to you and you need time to make it happen. You might have some people calling you out for being absent and whatnot, but nobody will say that you are not dedicated. Don't believe in this work-life balance bullshit. It's not the time and the place for it, at least in the beginning. Later, once you achieve your goals, sure, take time off, go to Bali, take your Sundays off and watch Netflix. So when your head hits the pillow at night, you either got the work done or you didn't. Nobody really cares about your success more than you do. Now, somebody will say, but what if I burn out? If you burn out, take a day or two off. Okay, then go back on the horse. I had a few burnouts in my life when I didn't feel like a human for weeks, but it's part of the process. Don't have ask your education or you'll be forever stuck in a hamster wheel where you don't make any progress. And lesson four is accountability. This is the most important thing I personally didn't have. Accountability is full ownership and responsibility over your actions. Accountability best works when you are accountable to someone else. Okay, because we tend to hold our promise when someone else depends on it. For example, if you don't write code six days a week, at least one hour a day, your family and friends die. Crazy shit, I know, but it works because you do the action for someone else. This is how I implement it in the coaching program that I run. And this is not some pitch, just telling you how I implement these things in the real world. So I have a roadmap for networking and reaching out to people so my students can land interviews without applying to jobs. While the information is there, their execution is kind of dodgy. So now I meet with them every week, one-on-one, to check on their progress. This is crucial right now because what tends to happen, and maybe you notice this yourself, you tend to be overwhelmed by information and start to feel resistance towards applying the information. That's why you buy so many courses or watch all these YouTube videos with the idea of learning. If you have someone to hold you accountable and ask you why aren't you doing something or if you have someone that you know expects something from you, then the likelihood of you doing the work will increase exponentially. It's a lot of work but it's up to you if you wanna change the tax bracket or stay where you are for another 10 or 20 years. The plane tickets, the Airbnbs, the Herman Miller chair cost money. The new Tesla that you want costs money. If you need help with learning code in the fastest and most efficient way possible, apply for my country program. That's the first link in the description. And if you wanna check out the program before you join, just to see what you're going to get yourself into, click on the second link in the description. That's where you can see our live coaching calls. You can see our community and you can see if you would like to be part of that. If you have anything to add, drop it in the comments. I would love to see what's going on through your mind. Cheers.